So if you think about generative AI as kind of three major components, you have your chips, your models, and your data. So chips, that's NVIDIA, everybody knows about that, or it seems to do these days. Uh, you have your models, which would be people like OpenAI, Anthropic, um, you know, foundational models like that, and then the data. And that's actually been powered by scale up to this point. So scale has powered 90% of the frontier models in the world. Um, and that's the way you can kind of think about generative AI today. Yeah, so scale uh, helps power the world's most advanced and frontier uh, models. Um, so everything from an open AI to uh, a llama model from Meta, um, as well as the fact what we do is we help enterprises and businesses take those learnings and take those models and actually uh, develop applications that provide real impact to their businesses. Uh, scale began pretty uh, with pretty humble beginnings. Um, it was founded by um, Alexander Wang, and he essentially uh, was at MIT, and he was simply trying to stop his roommates from stealing his food out of his fridge. And what he did was he had a, uh, a video camera and he started doing essentially computer vision to label and understand whose food was what and to see which food was still in the fridge and which wasn't. While he was developing these computer vision models, he realized that the only bottleneck wasn't actually compute or these other issues. It was actually that he didn't have enough data to train. Um, and so once he understood that, he realized that all models in the future, as they want to become more and more powerful, the data is the most important thing that they can do to generate more and better output. Um, and that's how we started our work with all the generative AI models, the foundational models, you know, again, um, and, and that has just exploded since 2019. Um, and our revenue has grown quite a bit. Um, we've most recently raised a billion dollars um, at a 14 billion, or roughly a $14 billion valuation. And I think this is reflective of the position that Scale has in the underlying infrastructure of generative AI. Yeah, so right now, this is a problem that's so complex that really it does take a lot of resources to be able to solve it. And then those resources, once you solve it, really provide huge economic benefit when you're talking about scale. So a lot of enterprise companies, I think that's where a bulk of uh, the work will be for at least the, the foreseeable you know, one to two years. Um, but as these models get better, as we get foundational models to be better, as we get better at prompt engineering, and we get better at understanding the infrastructure needed, a lot of those benefits will be um, passed down to uh, small and medium businesses that just want something to work out of the box. And so the mission is first to try to get the world's most complex issues figured out, and then um, eventually that technology will make its way to smaller applications. Everything's around the corner. It's, it's, it's hard to estimate time. Uh, you know, I, I don't know uh, if you can even remember what it was like before ChatGPT, right? It seems like it's been around forever and it's actually been around for you know a little, little over a year so the the amount of speed in this industry is absolutely tremendous mm -hmm.